Hi everybody, how are you? Good morning. It is 5.30 in the morning. And of course I'm up because my cat is up and it's just a cat thing. And she's got the zoomies. <laughs> she was sitting here running around here a second ago. She'll probably start up again. So what am I doing up at five in the morning, courtesy of my cat Booger? Well, I'm doing a little video. You know, since I'm awake, since I have my coffee, you know, because you got to have coffee first thing in the morning. Mm. I wanted to do kind of an update video because Chantal put out a community post yesterday saying she's backing out of doing react videos. I know. I know. We're all sad about that, aren't we? I actually am sad a little bit because that would have been entertaining content versus her just sitting down and eating food that would have been great even for just half a minute it would have been great but chantal has decided no she's not going to do react videos more than likely because she knows she sucks at it and whatever she has to say about the reactors anything she says it's a lie we've got receipts all day every day on everything she's ever said and anything she's ever done so whoever she wanted to react to, whether it be French Fried Girl or the YouTube Underground or, or anybody on YouTube, anybody, we got receipts. And if we don't have them, we know where to find them. So she didn't want to look like the biggest fool. So she all the way backed out. Yeah, I know. I know. I know. Doggone it. I'm sad. <laughs> we look forward to the entertaining content. We had the entertaining content with her for like half a minute with the Kai Bella stuff and even a little bit with the Thailand stuff. And ever since she got back to Kuwait, it's not been entertaining. It's just the same old, same old. But I wanted to go over her community post and stuff on Twitter. And also I wanted to do something that I know Chantal will not do, honestly answer the questions that people have put on her community post she said she wanted to do a q a and people have left their questions but knowing chantal she would never answer them honestly she would just pick through the ones that are not inflammatory and choose to answer those but looking through the list of questions a great many of them are inflammatory so how are you going to work that chantal <laughs> but let's go over the twitter stuff because there is stuff on Twitter that I'd like to show you. Uh, people giving their opinions about her not doing the React videos. Like the different reactors and different people have spoken up. So let's just go over the Twitter stuff, shall we? So for those of you that are on Twitter, there's my Twitter account. You can find me at Wow Girl Sarah. All right. So this post is from Julianthe. This video clip, uh, somebody out... I don't know if they were part of girl world or not, but this was from a while ago. This was back when she was in Canada. Look at the difference in how she was walking versus the way she walks now. So somebody out in the wild saw Chantal. She was doing a stream where she was walking across the street, streaming on YouTube, and they happened to catch her out in the wild. But look how much better she was walking then. What a difference the lost weight can make. So here she is doing her stream. Okay. And this is just stroke of luck. I just happened to see these two posts back to back to back. So this is from Chicken Pickle saying, I still can't get over this shot. She basically has to do a back bend to walk. So let's just, just for comparison, just for comparison, this is Chantal like way before the recent footage of her walking. You can see she's walking a lot easier. She's still walking a bit, in my opinion, like her, her, she's not really able to bend her knees, but she's walking with a quickness. Okay, you can tell she looks a lot smaller here, even with her coat on, versus this, versus that. And, and you've not gained that much weight, Chantal? Look at the difference in her walking stride. That's a big, big difference. Uh, Florida Salt and Sass's opinion. 
Besides the fact that it takes effort and she's lazy, Foodie Beauty doesn't want to do reactions because she'd be forced to sit through multiple times where she's held accountable and or has her gaslighting and lies exposed. She doesn't want to hear that. Nope. <laughs> she doesn't want the receipts to come out. And she knows that they're out there. She knows the, re the reaction channels. We got receipts all day. And the beautiful part about the receipts is that it's stuff that she has said. It's video clips that she has done. We can just throw them up on screen and go, oh, yeah, what about this? She doesn't want to deal with that. She really doesn't want to. And Chantal is not very good about giving opposing points in an educational way. She's all about the insults. You know, she's all about the insulting gotcha moments, not giving a different point of view to add to a debate or discussion. So she doesn't want to get that started. She knows she ain't ready. <laughs> she knows she's not ready. <laughs> uh, Chantal's untied apron strings says Chantal's goal in life was to find a man to have a couples channel with. And she can't even do that anymore because he was outed as a cheater who likes farts. I just know this person is mad. Well, the thing is, as far as him being a cheater, booger, she, I told you she got the zoomies. How can you cheat on somebody that you're not in a real relationship with? If all it was was an online played for paid for part you know like you're just you're just acting in a play there's no cheating involved you know like having an online fake relationship is not the same as a real life relationship but i guess that plays into the plot situation like what goes on online we have to act like it's a real thing even though it's not and she just got mad because his real personal life collided with her online fake romance life. <laughs> also, before I forget, this is just a thought running around in my head after thinking about it for a while. Sometimes when Chantal wants to get control of someone, she will threaten them with something. And since Salah is completely dependent on her money, and also her the couple's channel was a they thing like he was supposed to take a part in it and get money from it and in the past with natter chantal like she's threatened natter threatened to take away the money cut off his phone all that jazz i have to wonder and this is maybe it's just a reach but i'm just going to put it out there anyway I have to wonder if her threatening to make the couple's channel into a react channel, that might've been a way to threaten him in some way. Like I can completely cut you out of my YouTube thing and therefore you're not gonna get any money. Therefore you better spend time with me. It's just a thought. I'm just putting the thought on the table. I don't know if it means anything, but Chantal's a control freak. She likes to manipulate people through threats and with money so i have to wonder did that play into it that she was threatening to just completely yeet him from her youtube presence and therefore he wouldn't give money just to make him spend more time with her or be more attentive in some way just a thought y'all tell me what you guys think oof so this is from donna saying don't be suspicious you know chantal uses filters on her phone but the filters only work if you're close up to the phone. That way the camera can zoom in and like do their magic. This is what happens when you take the phone and you're far away from foodie. Like that far away shot. The, the filters can't work so well. My goodness. My goodness, Chantal. Mm -mm -mm. Okay, this is Florida Salt and Sass saying quick translation. It takes more work than clicking on a phone camera and just eating and raging. So I don't want to do it. Also, I suck and don't have the wit or the humor to be successful at it. So here's the community post, ladies and gentlemen, uh, saying, ugh. So I tried once again to do a reaction, but most of the ones I try and listen to 
either sound like the Wicked Witch of the East and West or Marge Simpson's long lost sisters, not to mention the sheer stupidity and the lost brain cells. I just can't do it. I don't know how so many can listen to that for two or more hours. Insane. I'll just focus on myself like everyone suggested and leave them to stay obsessed about me, meanwhile not even acknowledging they exist. In the end, it's hardly a flex since most of them are too cowardly to cam up. Hi. <laughs> when talking smack on others. Couldn't be me. Anyway, the bright side is any attention is good attention. New motto for this year. See you soon in a new video coming later today. Miss you, Beezers. Well, yesterday was kind of quiet for Chantal. She really didn't post anything. Yeah, nothing. <laughs> and another thing. And another thing for those who might be interested and want to know. So I just happened to be in Erie Pepperoni's live chat yesterday. Great reactor is Erie Pepperoni. I'm part of the Pizza Mafia and proud. And the walking video that Chantal did, where she showed her phone and, oh, I walked a certain number of steps. Here's something that I did not know that made me go, hmm. So if you're someone you have the app on your phone, like she has on her phone, did you know that you can essentially cheat the phone? You could sit down in a chair and all you have to do is just swing your arms back and forth and the phone thinks that you're taking a step. So in the video that Chantal did, uh, thank you, Erie, for pointing this out. She was swinging her arms vigorously, just trying to get those steps up, but it doesn't mean she took actual physical steps. Also something that Erie pointed out, I'm like, dang, girl, you got some good eyesight. Like you, you just solved all of this. Every time like in the video that Chantal was walking, there was usually a bench nearby, bench gate. <laughs> so all the jump cuts, when she starts walking again, usually you saw a bench behind her. So there was a lot less walking than what you were saying, huh, foodie? And you were cheating with that phone. You were swinging your arms, girl, swinging those arms, swinging those arms. And, and again, who is to say that Salah wasn't taking the phone and walking around and bringing the phone back to you. I think that was happening too. But yeah, Chantal, she's not going to do reactions. She just gave up before she even got started because she knew she would get humiliated. And whatever channel she talked about, they would get a boost in views and a boost in subs. And she already can't stand the fact that a lot of us are getting more engagement than her. <laughs> We're experiencing the channel growth and she really hasn't. The only time her channel grows is when she buys subs and then YouTube bots pick them up and they get rid of them and then she buys some more and lather, rinse, repeat. <laughs> but there's the community post, y'all. Uh, okay, Acadia Strong says, talking about the walking video, once again, she's messed up with the time and distance, claims to have walked 4,267 steps in 47 minutes. Her walk began at 20 minutes and 30 seconds. By 2210, she had completed her 3,000 steps. See the discrepancy? Yeah, I do. You know, lying liar who lies. Uh, Sarah Abbey says, Foodie Beauty, 6K steps is approximately 2.82 miles. On average, it takes 15 to 22 minutes to walk a mile. Yes, you're 400 pounds and it takes longer, but you said you walked three hours straight the other day. How would you not be able to walk 2.82 miles easily every day? Let me guess. You lied about walking for three hours. Well, of course she did. Of course she did. If she's doing a 15-minute video, 15 minutes, y'all, and she's near a bench every time she does a jump cut and she's leaning up against trees and leaning up against the rails, that means her back hurts. Her back is killing her. She's uncomfortable. She's not able to walk three hours. She's not physically able to. Uh, Alex is shook. Hello, Alex, sir. Alex is shook, says, yeah, no crap, Sherlock. It takes wit and a quick tongue. When you're confronted with your bold, you know there's no way to defend it. 
All you've got is a couple of cheap insults and playground curse words. As I said, keep eating. It's what you're good at. And we all have, okay, is there more? Yes, there's more. And we all have strengths. Well, that, that I guess that's her strength, putting stuff in her mouth. You know, like she, you know, foodie's known for two things, garbage going into her mouth and garbage coming out of her mouth. Okay. Like she's just, a, she's a big old dumpster. Uh, Queen of, oops, sorry. Queen of WTF says, come on. You don't want to answer the questions people really want answers to. No, no, she doesn't. And that's why I'm going to answer the questions for her because you guys can be sure I'll give more truth than she ever will. <laughs> Uh, D Angry Scott says, Foodie Beauty realizes and confirms what we all know. She can't do reactions. Recorded reactions would never work for Foodie. She's only ever done it by on streams, and 90% of it, she's talking to chat or being led by the chat comments. Foodie can't admit it takes skills, though. Yes, it takes a lot of skill. It takes skills to be a reactor. You know, and you, you do a ton of homework. You've done a, no, a ton of research, believe it or not. Like if you react to foodie, you got to be knowledgeable about the lore and the history of foodie beauty, about the things she's done and when she did it. <laughs> I know far too much about Chantal. I wish I didn't know some of these things. You got to know uh, where the videos are that you want to include in with the reactions and show them to people to make certain points. I mean, it's just a lot of work. It's like a doggone college course. <laughs> and you got to come to class with your notes, with your clips, with your everything every day. She could never. All right, let's see. Oh, for those who want to know, Beezers, pay attention. Okay, this is when Chantal lived at the villa. These are the conditions that BBJ and Sam were living in. Do you see the filth going on here? And you guys wonder why the reaction community and the reactors don't like Chantal. Look at this, Phil. Look, look, this is how she lived. This is even worse. This is how the cats lived. There's poo on the carpet, her clothes all over the place. She can't even walk a straight line from her bedroom door to the computer or her phone. Look, tell me again, that's acceptable. That is not acceptable. That just isn't. No, no. What you do to yourself is one thing. How you treat your pets is another thing. If you're human, you have the option to walk outside and do something or to clean up your house. Animals don't have that option. We are their pet parents. They depend on us to give them a healthy life. And if you can't give your pets a healthy life, then you shouldn't have them to begin with. Anyway, okay, so... Uh, <laughs> There she is taking her first steps, courtesy of Cowboy Dog. Okay, so that's all I got for the Twitter stuff. So I wanted to do something for the Beezers, even though I don't know why some of you guys are over there. But I wanted to answer her questions honestly, since she's not going to. And there's a good chance that she's going to get rid of these questions from the Beezers. Like, here's the community post saying, hi, guys, I want to do a Q&A video, so please leave your questions below. Thanks for participating. And they did ask some really good questions. So I'm going to be the one to answer these questions. So P says, yes, where's your husband? What do his friends think about the whole poop gates the candle? <laughs> it's obvious his family would be embarrassed. Does he have a real job? If so, what is it? Why does he film you in the most unflattering ways? Well, that's more than one question. So I guess we got to break it down. Where is her husband? Well, her husband, he's enjoying his time away from the camera. Even though the Kybella thing ruined him on social media forever, at the same time, it was a blessing in disguise because he doesn't have to do anything online with Chantal. He hated every single time he had to come on camera with her. Hence the reason why he barely touched her. And he was filming all of those uh, really bad angles. What do his friends think about the whole poop gate scandal? I don't think his friends know. I really don't think so. Uh, it's obvious his family would be embarrassed. I don't understand why his family hasn't pulled Salah out of this thing. 
I mean, it's getting dangerous for them. Why wouldn't they? Does he have a real job? Uh, no, no, he doesn't. How can he have a real job and be there for Chantal whenever she needs? If she needs food, if she needs food deliveries, if she needs to go shopping, he's got to be right there because she doesn't know anyone else in Kuwait. Why does he film you in the most unflattering ways? Because he can't stand her. He cannot stand her. That's why he does it. He's throwing that silent shade. He doesn't want to mess up the paycheck by insulting her to her face. So he just films her in the most unflattering ways. Uh, Hannah says, if Salah moved out, would you pretend that you were still living together and continue to live in Kuwait alone whilst paying him to film your vlogs? Or would you go back to Canada? I think she might still stay in Kuwait for a while because honestly, where does she have to go? She does have family back in Canada, but they don't have like a spare guest house or something to put her up. And even if they did have a guest house, they know her sloppy, disgusting ways. And they don't want the chance of her filming at their house and then people finding out that she's filming at their house and they get bothered in some way. <laughs> uh, if y'all remember the whole situation with Music Biz Marty, <laughs> the tow truck that came to the house, <laughs> I think that situation with the tow truck coming to the house, that was it for Chantal's family. And that's why they told her the last time she came back, look, you can't stream here. Absolutely not. You can sleep on the couch. So you have a place to stay at night. But during the daytime, if you got to film, you got to get out of here. But I think she would pretend for a while that they were still living together and live in Kuwait. There's been rumors that Salah has his own little apartment really close to her apartment. He's in his own place. And Chantal has that whole apartment to herself. Hence the reason why we never see him. He just drops by to drop off her food or get her food and, and do some filming. And that's essentially it. Uh, let's see. Zoe says, have you looked at the symptoms of oppositional defiant disorder and borderline personality disorder? Do you believe you might be experiencing these disorders? Is it possible that you are addicted to stress? Additionally, why are you not interested in learning to speak Arabic, especially considering your desire to live there for a while, your husband's first language, and as a means to show appreciation for the culture? Well, she's been in Kuwait for a year, and she's had plenty of time to learn at least a little bit of Arabic, but she is not a person that she wants to be part of society. She wants to live on the outside edge and just have her needs met. So she's not interested in meeting people, talking to, to people, learning from people, having a social group of friends. She picks one favorite person and that's all she wants is that one person. And that one person is usually somebody that she's paying for companionship. Like she doesn't want other interaction. She wants the online interaction because the online interaction, she doesn't have to face people. If she gets them upset, she doesn't have to look them in the eye and acknowledge that she's done some sort of wrong. But as far as what might be wrong with Foodie, again, she's got access to doctors, therapists. She can go online and maybe set up some Zoom meetings or something with people that might be able to help her. She's not interested in her health. She's interested in promoting and monetizing her lack of health and coming online and trauma dumping with people and trauma bonding with people. This is someone who does not believe in being healthy. She has no interest in it. So she's going to just profit off of all the negative rather than reach for the positive. Uh, Bob says, why is one side of your face swollen along with your eye? Have you seen a doctor about this? I, I don't know if Foodie has. A lot of people have pointed it out. It might point to say a heart problem, but only a doctor would know. But she's got to be the one to care the most about it and do something. I'm sure her weight and her diet have something to do with it. But again, only a doctor would know the answers to these questions. But even if a doctor told her exactly what was wrong, the doctors, nurses, hospitals, 
specialists, therapists, psychotherapists, they can only do so much. The majority of the work has to start with you. You've got to care about yourself. They'll give you the tools to care for yourself and better yourself, but you've got to use the tools. Otherwise, it's a moot point. Uh, Ecom says, have you or do you consider your life out of control when it comes to your ability to control your eating and control your health? If so, have you considered inpatient or an outpatient program? In my opinion, that's exactly what Foodie needs. She needs inpatient, controlled, restricted, locked down, severe inpatient. Considering the gravity of the problem that she's got going on, considering the environment that she puts herself in, that would be the only thing that might save her life and keep her from doing further harm to herself. But she's not going to consider it as long as YouTube is her own source of income and she's got no other way to make money. So she's going to stay in that unhealthy environment and she's going to continue to do the videos that she's doing and she's going to continue gaining weight and she's never going to lose weight and she's pushing herself towards a medical emergency and there's nothing that any of us can do. Uh, Jeff says, is Salah in hiding? Yes. <laughs> yes, he is. He is in hiding. His online media presence has been ruined. It is done. Even if physically he walked away from foodie right now and said, I'm done here. They are forever linked. Wherever you look for his name, you're going to find her name. So unless he changed his name to something different, wherever he goes on YouTube, wherever he goes online, Foodie's going to be right there. He has no idea how badly he screwed up by hooking up with her, by just trying to catch the easy path of trying to find the yellow brick road and fast track himself to a lot of money. He has ruined himself in so many ways. So right now he's in hiding. He's just hanging on just enough to get a little bit of money and get the rent paid from Foodie. But like this whole thing is blown up in his face and he's hiding in a corner. Uh, Aluminum says, how long is Salah grounded from the internet? That, that's up to him. <laughs> I mean, if he wants to come back, we got jokes all day. We got jokes every day for Salah. The whole scat man joke is never going to get old and we're going to keep talking about it. Aren't we fellas? Yep. We sure are. We are never going to let him forget if he's over in the corner, like peeking his head above the covers, saying, have they stopped making scat man jokes yet? Uh, is it safe to come back? We're going to be on the other side of the covers going, no, we're not done yet. We're not done. Just, just, just keep hiding your head, Salah. <laughs> okay, so next question. Uh, Zoe says, one more question. You mentioned that you don't have hobbies. How many hours a day do you spend on your phone, including working on, editing your videos for YouTube, watching YouTube videos, filming cameos, and browsing social media? Chantal's always on her phone. And she could be doing a lot more work. She could be doing a lot more of caring for herself. It The videos that she's doing, since the videos are like 15 minutes long, trust me, I've done ambiance videos that sometimes it takes me three hours working on just one video. A 15 minute video, just splicing together little bits of footage, do not take that long. It doesn't take that long to upload it and to make a thumbnail if you know what you're doing. You know, it, it, it takes just mere minutes for a 15 minute video. It doesn't take long for YouTube to fully process a 15 minute video and run through all the checks, which leaves her hours and hours and hours and hours and hours of time to do whatever. And she spends her whatever time doing nothing except eating. In my opinion, I think Chantal, every time she sits down to eat a meal, she does a video. She's probably got a backlog of videos of mukbangs she's done that she just slowly releases them so she can have daily content. So she eats four meals in a day, she'll do four videos. And she's also infamous for putting the videos out of time, like out of sync, 
to throw the reactors off so they can't notice certain details. So there's that. It doesn't take that long to do editing, Zoe. It doesn't take long to put a short video together. She makes it seem like it's more work, but it really it, there, it really isn't. Uh, Hammerhead says, there are about 7,500 Canadians living in Kuwait. Why have you not reached out and made friends with any of them? Chantal, make friends? What? <laughs> Chantal is not about that making friends life. Uh, again, she put herself in a corner. She's trying to hang on to the whole thing of she is a rev newly reverted Muslim woman. Uh, Muslim women, as I understand it, are not allowed to have male friends. So what the, would that leave her with? Female friends, right? Uh, but she looks at women as the enemy. She hates other women. And Chantal is deathly afraid that if she has a woman friend in Kuwait, if that woman is smaller or more attractive than herself, that Salah is going to just latch onto her and forget all about her. So she stays all by herself. She doesn't want to make friends. She doesn't want to hang out with anybody. She doesn't want to go shopping. She doesn't want to do anything that might be considered healthy interaction. She just wants to sit in a room and eat her food. Uh, Turkish Coffee says, I think you should let everyone ask questions and not just show the questions you approve of. Before you moved to Kuwait, you wanted to adopt a baby. If st that's still a plan. Oh, <laughs> I don't think she'd be able to adopt. I mean, because you have to show that you are financially stable. You got to show that you're healthy. Chantal can't show either one of those. And honestly, why would she want to adopt a baby? She has trouble taking care of herself to the point where she needs a caretaker. So how can you be somebody and you are at a level of health where you need a caretaker and you want to adopt a child? Children are a big responsibility. Chantal has gone on record as saying she hates kids. She can't stand them. She doesn't like the noises they make. She doesn't like how loud they are. She doesn't like how they get more attention than her. She would be a bad mother. She doesn't have the personality. She doesn't have the, uh, the, the patience. She would not be concerned for the health of that child, nor its welfare. I mean, look at her pets. Look at the way she treats her pets. And pets are much more simple compared to a human child. She's just saying things like that, like the adopted baby thing, just to get the community riled up and worried. She's not going to follow through with it. She won't. She, she's not showing stability to adopt a child. It, it would be a bad idea for her. Very bad. And I agree with Tur Turkish Coffee. Let everyone ask questions and not just cherry pick through them. But that's Chantal. She will cherry pick. Uh, Chrissy says, if you end up too ill or bed bound, become unable to make YouTube videos, what's your backup plan to make enough money to continue living? How are you going? How are you without issue? She doesn't have a backup plan. And I'm not being mean saying that. She doesn't have a backup plan. Chantal has put herself in such a state. Like, honestly, what job could she do? She is entitled. And it's weird. She's entitled, but she's burnt out on being entitled. She's gotten her channel up enough to where she makes a certain amount every month. And she knows about the roundabout figure of what she makes. And because of that, there's no urgency for her to make more money. She just expects it every month. I'm pretty sure the last couple of paychecks have been sucking because she's not done much in the way of videos during the month of December when she could have made the most money. She didn't do very much. She was too busy just mucking about, but she doesn't have a plan. She couldn't even do a regular customer service job of sitting at a desk and answering a phone. You know, she couldn't do any job requiring that she stand on her feet and walk around. And with her personality, she doesn't know how to talk to people. She doesn't know how to be nice. She's not a nice person. There, there's no job off of YouTube that she could do that she would be good at. Uh, that chick says, do you think 
you'll actually do what doctors tell you. I've already lost body parts from the beatus. Oh, I'm sorry. And what you're doing is so, so scary. Please stop. I'm sorry that happened to you, the chick. I'm so sorry that happened to you. But unfortunately, chick, she'll, she will never do what the doctors tell her. Ever. She's already had numerous doctors and numerous people. They tell her the same things. You know, fix your diet. Uh, don't eat the carbs. Control the carb intake. Uh, bring down your calorie count. She's not listening. And a, a little something, something for anybody that comes over here, whether it's a Beezer or not. I mean, it's, this is just fact. Chantal is over 500 pounds. She was almost 400 pounds in 2017 when she lived with Bibi. Her last true weigh-in happened with him. She got on the scale. She showed the number. It was 300 and 77 pounds. So she was what? 27 pounds away from 400 then. And you can look at her then and look at her now and tell she's easily gained over a hundred pounds. So she's at 500 pounds. It takes a certain number of calories per day to maintain 500 pounds. Once you go over that certain number of calories, you will start to gain weight, right? Right. So for Chantal being about 500 pounds, she's probably eating in excess of like 5,000 calories. So if she's over 500 pounds and she's rapidly gaining weight, that means big mama is eating about 6,000, 7,000 calories a day, if not more. I forget who did this on YouTube. So if y'all know who I'm talking about, please let me know. I wanted to react to this video, but there is a person on YouTube. I saw the video. I'm like, doggone it. I forgot to save it. Showing easily that Chantal is eating 10,000 calories a day. When you add up all the meals she's eating a day, like what she shows us and the calorie count for them, plus the candy bars, 10,000 calories a day. And just to put it in perspective, I'm a 53 year old woman. I'm five foot four, about 130 pounds. My normal calorie intake for the entire day should be about 1800, 2000 calories, depending on how active I am. So if Chantal is eating 10,000 calories a day, that's about five or six days worth of calories for me. And she's eating that in an entire day. It's scary. She's eating way, way, way too much, way too much. And people are warning her on YouTube. They're warning her, slow down, Chantal. This is crazy. You are wearing clothes and within a mere month or two after buying new clothes, they're ready to pop off of you. You're breaking shower drains. You're breaking couches. This has never happened before. We've never experienced this before in Foodieverse. Your, your body is at a tipping point. Slow down. She doesn't want to listen. She just doesn't. And to be honest with y'all, and I'm just keeping it real, even if she, say, by chance, lost a finger, lost a leg, lost a toe to diabetes, I don't think that would stop her. I don't think that would be a scary wake-up moment for her. I think she would just simply take that incident and turn it into content and a way to get sympathy from people and super chats. Honestly, that would not be a turning point for her. She looks at everything as content. The more shocking, the more dramatic, the better. She, she would get on camera and say, I've lost my finger to diabetes or I've lost my leg and now I can't do things and boo hoo hoo. When at the same time, she could have stopped that from happening. And it'll be the same situation if she becomes bed bound. You know, it, it, there's going to be no wake up moments here. She doesn't want to wake up. She wants to sleep in her fantasy. Uh, trashy girl says, hi, foodie. Quick question. How did you manage to gain 13 pounds? Does that question really need an answer? How do you gain 13 pounds? By eating more than your calorie intake a day. That's how you gain 13 pounds. 
if she's 13 pounds in one week, there's seven days in a week, 13 pounds. That means big mama gained two pounds every day, every day. And didn't I tell y'all before, like her calorie intake is just insane. There's 3,500 calories in one pound of fat. So let's do the quick math on that. 3,500 times two, 7,000 calories. If she's getting two pounds a day, that means she's eating 7,000 plus calories extra a day on top of the calories that she would have to eat to maintain 500 pounds. So 5,000 calories plus 7,000 calories, that's 12,000 calories. That's what, when you think about it, what? But that's how you gain the weight like that. When you're eating far too many calories, far too much junk food, processed food is full of calories. There's no nutrition in it. You just keep eating and keep eating. Yeah, you can gain weight like that. All right, see, uh, TT says, would you take on the challenge of giving up rice for veggies for an entire week? No, no, she's a carb addict. And, and I, I, hey, me over here, hi, uh, that was me too. Not to the extent that she is, but, oh, those carb cravings, they suck. And all of her meals are carb heavy. All of them. Excessive carbs, ridiculous carbs. She's got to have her carbs. She's got to have that sugar. Got to. Chandra says, why aren't you doing the reaction videos? Why did you change your mind in less than 24 hours? Because she's a coward. She chickened out. <laughs> she chickened out. She knows we got the receipts. She knows she would get her butt handed to her. Any channel that she tried to go after, she'd have her butt handed to her. We pull up our archives of receipts. Or if we didn't have them, we go looking for them because there's all kinds of great archive channels. And we would just throw her lies back in her face. And all of you new beezers that don't know the lore, that don't know the history, you would find out what a liar she really is. And she's trying to repaint, rewash her image with you. Yeah. Yeah. She don't want you to know what a liar she is. So she hides it to the best of her ability. But then when we do the retro reacts, she really gets mad because she hopes that that stuff doesn't come back around and bite her in the butt. And it usually does. <laughs> She's not a good reactor. She isn't. Oh, no. User says, are there any ideas for videos with Salah when he returns? I suggest should have Salah read out a hostage apology note in an orange outfit in the desert next to you with a vegetable pointed at his head. <laughs> That's so ridiculous. You know, listen, I don't have any sympathy for Salah. I don't. He signed on for this thing, didn't he? He did. He did. I think it's hilarious. It's funny. It's karmic. You got two scammers who got in contact with each other. They scam the crap out of each other. He thought he was going to just run around, play around, get her money. Before she went to Kuwait the first time, I'm sure that she kept the filters going on her phone. And he didn't get a good look at her until she came through that airport the first time. If y'all remember, when she was walking through that airport, she's blushing, she's giggling. And you had to know that in her head, she's thinking, got him. I'm here. He can't do anything about it. I've turned the tables on this romance scammer. So she went there for three months, came home. He could have cut it off. He could have said, okay, I'll put up with her for three months, but we're done here. But he chose to go back in. He chose to keep this going and it just kept getting far worse, far worse. And here we are. You let it go on too long, Salah. And because you did, now you got to deal with the consequences. Your social media presence is destroyed. There's no way to clean this up. None. None. <laughs> Even if you physically got away from her, you're not going to get away from her. 
your names are forever linked. She's destroyed you forever. Uh, Ivy says, what would you do if YouTube ended? She's not counting on that. Look, it's like any other platform. This goes for all channels on YouTube. None of us know how long YouTube is going to be around. None of us have any idea. Nobody has any clue how long YouTube is going to be up and what changes are going to be made or what policies are going to go into effect. The policies are changing all the time. I've heard of different channels that are getting demonetized for just things that were okay in the past. Her and Amberlynn Reed are both so awful about this. Like They had their high points where they were making money. And so because they were making money during those time periods, they counted on the YouTube train running forever, that they were going to make good money forever. And you can't look at it like that. You got to prepare for the worst. You got to have a plan B. She never has had one. Hence the reason why she's suffering now. If she had taken care of her health and done the right things with the money she made, she'd be fine right now. But she foolishly spent her money on things she did not need, people that she did not need to spend her money on. And here she is basically working class broke. Just paycheck to paycheck, trying to make it work taking out payday loans, trying to, you know, meet the, the month at the end of the money. Uh, New York says, are you scared? Oops, sorry. Are you scared about your health issues and how it could affect your future quality of life? It seems you take every diagnosis in stride. She takes it in stride because she tries to put on a brave face. It's out of sight, out of mind. And really, she shouldn't be doing that. She should put all of those issues in the front of her mind and do something about them rather than ignore them. Uh, Gorlash says, why are you not taking insulin to get your blood sugars back to normal and avoid further damage to your body? You are not able to do it with just medication. 10 is not a good fasting blood sugar. So this is the point where your doctor should be putting you on insulin. Look, the medication can only do so much. The idea of the medication is to pair it up with exercise and the proper diet. All three of them working together can get some results. But the only reason why Chantal is taking her medication, in my opinion, is to give herself the room to have more B moments and get away with it to where she will not go into a diabetic coma. She is manipulating her blood sugar to continue the B moments. And, and that's just horrible. Uh, let's see. Uh, Basic says, did you really walk those 3,000 plus steps or did Salah walk most of them? Oh, he probably walked most of them. Or she did the trick where she had the phone and swing her arms, swing her arms, trying to get those extra steps. She didn't walk all those steps. I mean, we've seen Chantal on video, her walking across the room and she's coated in sweat. Her face is beet red. She's breathing heavy. Notice she really wasn't breathing heavy. Her heart rate wasn't getting up. That's another thing. If you ever expect to lose weight with something like low impact aerobics, like walking, you got to get your heart rate up and you got to keep it up for a while. Every time she starts to get walking, she sits, she sits, she sits. How can you burn calories like that? If the moment your heart starts to pump a little bit, you're sitting down. So <laughs> let's see. Kiwi says Salah proof of life. I, honestly, I don't want to see him on camera. I think he's fine. Uh, let's see. Tally who says I've spent a lot of energy in my life. I am old in the pursuit of men, watching my weight, changing my personality and fussing over them. And you know what I've realized? Men don't think like women at all. It takes age and life experiences before they really care about other people, even their woman. If you never have had to pursue a man, why would you do that with life? What are your interests? I, I, hey, that's kind of unfair. There's lots of good men out in the world and there's lots of good women. You know, you can't judge all men by just the experiences with a few, you know, same thing with men to women. There, there's good people in the world. Sounds like you've had a few bad apples. 
But I'm glad that you're taking care of yourself and you're putting yourself first. It's a shame that Chantal doesn't do that. All right. Uh, user says, why not come clean about the couple's channel and Salah? If he's not coming back, why are you together? If what you wanted was a couple's channel in the first place. Well, user, in my opinion, and this is just mine, mind you, she has nowhere else to go. Back in Canada, she had a huge bankruptcy that she had to deal with. And if she stayed in Canada, the tax man would be chasing her all over the place. And she's trying to escape from that by staying in Kuwait. Although there is a Canadian embassy in Kuwait, Chantal. So hiding out there is not a good idea. <laughs> they can still find you there. <laughs> but when she went home to Canada, she had the option to get herself her own place. But anyone who's ever moved into a place, like say a one bedroom, that's easily five or six K, you know, first month's rent, last month's rent. If you've got bad credit, which she does have in a bankruptcy, the only way to get around that, if it's allowed, is to pay even more money, you know, just to make the landlord know and feel comfortable that you will pay your rent or you have to have a guarantor that the rent will be paid. So she went home to Canada and she could have set up house right there, but I don't think she had the money at that time. She did have the apartment in Kuwait that she was paying for. So she went home, she didn't have much money. And then she went back to Kuwait because that was the only place that she had going on. It was already set up. So she went back there because literally she had nowhere else to go. So she just, she's just doing what she can do with the little bit she does have. And she's not helping herself by putting out boring content and making more money. You know, she doesn't want to work for her money. So she's just getting by with a little bit she does have. If he's not coming back, why are you together? Because she needs a caretaker. Salah functions as a sort of uh, errand runner and caretaker. You know, she, she can't live alone. It would not be safe for her to live alone at her current condition. It would not be safe. And a professional caretaker would cost her a lot of money, like a 24-hour care cost her a lot of money uh always so tired says did you ever consider your weight loss career could be hindering your weight loss motivation are you kidding <laughs> Chantal caters to the feedies in her audience been catering to them for years she's turned herself into a fetish model but instead of doing the fetish modeling and videos and content on a private site like only hands She's doing it on YouTube because there's far less competition. If she were, say, on OnlyHands, she would have a lot more competition. She would just be, a, you know, a drop in the bucket amongst all those other people. So she brought her content, her fetish content, to YouTube because more people could see her and watch her videos and give her more money. But she's always catered to the wrong section of her audience. Always. You know, she turned her issue with food and, and gave it a job. And, and not only does it affect her, it affects other people that watch her that also might have issues with food. Uh, Wandering says, why do you always look up when eating? Why do you always look away from the camera when talking and eating? Well, she's got to look at the camera. Why do you look away from the camera when talking and eating? Because she, she's doing the mindless eating, in my opinion. Mindless eating. You're not thinking about what you're doing. You're just doing it. You're just shoving it down your throat. Let's see. Big eye roll says, did you ever feel regretful about giving up your cats? Do you wish you had taken them with you? Genuine question. She doesn't feel regretful. When she gave up Sam, she literally did a pizza party that night. She wasn't crying. When she gave up BBJ, she was even more joyful. She was joyful up until the point when she found out French Fry Girl and her family had BBJ. And then she had a complete meltdown. <laughs> All she cared about was running to Kuwait to be with Salah. If she had to give up the villa, give up Pete's, give up the cats. 
She was all about that life. Let me just get to Kuwait as quickly as I can before he runs off to the Red Room and finds another woman. And then whatever deal they got worked out, it's 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 defunct. She was wanting to sink her claws into Salah and keep them there. She didn't want anybody else coming along and ruining that. She was so focused on Salah, but she never once regretted giving up those cats. She was never truly sorrowful about that. Imagine that cats that gave her unconditional love that truly loved her. They didn't fake love her. They loved her. They were devoted to her. That's the beautiful thing about pets. Like you could do wrong to them and they would still forgive you. They, they have that unconditional love. She said she wanted it. She had it in her pets and she did not value what she had, but she, even before Salah, hey, Beezers, listen to this. This is where knowing the Chantour lore comes into play. Y'all want to know something? The situation of her giving up the pets, that was not the first time. It wasn't. For those of you that weren't around during this time, the Crackhead Olympics, when she was with Natter, you know, she wanted to be with Natter. The situation happened before that. She wanted to give up the cats and she wanted to get rid of Pete's. She would go to the park and talk about, oh, Pete's will be in a better place and, and it'd be healthier for him. Yeah, she was ready to give everything up, not once, but twice while she was seeing Natter. So like she's always been quick to dump people that are her friends and, and her pets on other people if it meant being with a man for five minutes. It's a pattern with her. Like as long as she's near a man, give up everything else. Who cares? Let's see. Ooh. Je oh, well, Jessica Messica left a comment saying this has nothing to do with anything, but I wish you would react to one of the documentaries about yourself instead of just a reaction. You can clarify things or elaborate. Hey, that would be interesting if she reacted to one of her documentaries, but I don't think she ever will. Because there's too much truth in them. <laughs> and the moment she does a reaction like that, if she says, oh, this is a lie, this is a lie. Again, we got receipts. We got them all day. We'll gather them up. We'll put them in a video. We'll load them up on StreamYard one by one by one. Make her look more like the liar. <laughs> so let her do it. Like, hey, whatever she wants to do. Uh, let's see. Uh, walks like a cat says, are you all at all afraid of what you're doing to your body? I personally had to stop myself from worrying about you. It drains me in a bad way. Listen to that, Chantal. Listen. Let me read that again. I personally had to stop myself from worrying about you. It drains me in a bad way. What I say. What did I say, y'all? Her content is bad for her and it's bad for other people. It negatively affects other people. If she does content revolving around B, E, D, anybody that has that or something like it, that might trigger them to relapse, to have a B moment or two. It might interfere in their recovery and their healing. But even people on her channel that don't suffer from that, that don't have to deal with that ever, they come to her channel and watching her content drains them. So if you're someone on Chantal's channel and you go to her channel and if you find yourself in the position where before you even watch the live chat or the video, you find yourself saying, oh, not again, you know, like you're dreading it. That's a sign that maybe you shouldn't be watching it. Maybe it's not the best for you. Like maybe you're being drained or oversaturated with negativity. We as people, sometimes we're like sponges. We soak in things. We soak in different kinds of energy. And if you get oversaturated with negative energy, it will drain you. It'll make you sick. But walks like a cat says, are you at all afraid of what you're doing to your body? I personally had to stop myself from worrying about you. It drains me in a bad way. 
it hurts us to see someone harm themselves, even if we don't know the person. But she doesn't care. Beezers, get it to your head. She does not care if it hurts you. She wants to hurt you. She wants to make you worry. She wants you to be concerned because if you're concerned for her welfare, that means you're going to be on high alert and come watch her live streams. She wants that negative attention. If she made the kind of content where she was fine and healthy, you wouldn't be so prompted to come see what's going on. Eh, I have stuff to do. Chantal's fine. I'll watch her video later. She wants you to worry. She wants you to always be there when she goes live. So I did a video recently, like the, a video from 2017, courtesy of Marley Hendricks, where she did a small video. She was at a thousand subscribers and she was giving tips and tricks on how to get people uh, interested in your content. And one of the things she said was clickbait. Clickbait people and over-exaggerate. It wasn't about quality content. It was about, let me clickbait people. Let me get people worry about me. Exaggerate, lie. She said that. She wants you guys to worry about her. Be concerned for her. Have your blood pressure up. Go to her live chats. What's wrong, Chantal? Is everything all right? She wants that feeling. She exploits that feeling to the fullest. She is the little boy who cried wolf. And you guys fall for it every time. But you're all going to get to a point eventually where you're burnt out on all of the worry and the concern and the stress. You're going to get to a point where you just can't take it anymore. A lot of Beezers that were there like a year or two ago, they're no longer around because they got burnt out. But, you know, do as you do. Hell, let's see. Uh, Bliss says, are you still friends with Pete? And what is your husband's view about that, if yes? I, I don't think she talks to Pete. I think she keeps him on the back burner in case she needs him. But a long, long time ago, she was with Pete. Then she cheated on Pete with BB. Then she was with BB. And she was still getting money from Pete while with BB. And then when BB got tired of her nonsense and kicked her out, at the time, Pete had a good job. He had good credit. So Chantal latched on to him and wanted to get a place with him because on her own, she couldn't do it with her bankruptcy and her lack of money. So she used pizza's good credit and his money to get into the villa. He, he put his name on the dotted line. And now Pete's is in a place where he's renting a room and he doesn't have much money, so he can't help her. Therefore she has no use for him. You know, like, she, you know, she, she's one of those people that she, she'll walk up to you. She'll talk to you. She'll size you up. She'll figure you out. If you've got any resources or anything that she can use for her benefit, she'll, you know, smooth on up to you. But once you run out of usefulness, she'll drop you. So Pete's has been dropped. They're, they're never going to live together again. Okay. People are asking about children. Let's see. There's a lot of questions here. What? Christian Smith says, do you have any advice for going to inpatient care eating problems? Yeah, I got some advice. Don't listen to Chantal and don't go to her for advice. She's not an expert in anything. She's constantly spreading misinformation. Go to a professional that knows what they're talking about. If you're someone and you've got something going on with you, please do your own research. Don't look to Chantal to give you knowledge. If she knew what she was talking about, she would not be 550 pounds and sick and so close to a medical emergency or bed bound. It's not even funny. You can look at her and tell she doesn't know what she's talking about. She doesn't practice what she preaches. 
you got something wrong with you, seek out the proper individuals and people that can best help you. But don't trust what she's saying. She's all about that misinformation life. Don't listen to her. Don't. And see. Uh, Jan all says, would you like an accountability partner? I'm on the same journey and would love someone to stay on track with. No, she doesn't want a partner that will hold her accountable because then she would co get called out on her nonsense and she wants to do what she wants to do. She's always chosen people that will enable her rather than hold her accountable. She doesn't want to hear opposing opinions. She doesn't want that partner that will tell her enough is enough. You need to go to inpatient. You need to go to therapy. She doesn't want the backlash. She doesn't want somebody bucking up to her. She wants someone that will just say yes to her and give her what she wants. She wants that whole system of enabling. All right. Uh, Jazz says, what are the key differences between living in Kuwait versus Canada? What do you miss from Canada? The freedom to go get her green. <laughs> the freedom to get in her car. And if she wants some fast food, she could just go get it. Go to the dispensary if she wants to. That's what she misses about Canada. She doesn't miss her family. Uh, let's see. Looking, looking, looking. I think that's it as far as the, all the good questions. I just wanted to do the Q&A for Chantal because she's not honest. She'll never give you guys the honesty, but I'll do it. I'll be the honest one here. <laughs> so that's it for the react, y'all. Look, I know, listen, I know we're all sad. We are all broken up. We're heartbroken over the fact that Chantal is not going to do react videos. Doggone it. I was disappointed. I'm just going to be broken the entire day about it. <laughs> but you know what? I knew the possibility of her doing reactions was small. You know, like she's a chicken. She's a chicken. Chicken. She eats chicken and she is a chicken. You know, she, she wasn't going to do it. She wasn't going to walk into the reactor ring and put her gloves on. Because any reactor, any of them, would deliver a knockout punch. Any of them. Without even trying, we wouldn't even break a sweat. So, sad day. No reactions for us. No interesting content. Oh, well. I'm here anyway. And I'm going to be looking around for the, uh, the interesting stuff and bring it to y'all because that's just what I do. So I hope you guys enjoyed this react and me answering the Q&A. Hope you enjoyed it. If you have, please like it, subscribe and leave a comment. Thank you so much for being here and have a good one. Bye.